All right, I'm George Cow, and I'm really excited to be here today with Steve Mattis. Um, he and I have had a couple of really great conversations, and I'm looking forward to having him share with you his message and his presence. I think it'll be really nourishing for uh, those of you who are, well, I think just about everybody here might call themselves a hard-faced, you know, self-employed professional or entrepreneur. So, Steve. Thank you so much for doing this. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for having me, George. I really appreciate the opportunity. It's been such a pleasure uh, to connect with you over the past uh, month or so. Yeah. And yeah. I've been really looking forward to this. Yes. Yes, me too. So I want to just make sure that the audience has some, some sense of your background. And then uh, I'll just read your bio and then we'll get, we'll get into it. So sure. Steve has been <clears throat> supportively walking alongside clients. I love that. Since 2009 helping them get what they really want in their business and life while staying in healthy connection with their heart along the way. Steve's work is highly individualized and includes a mix of nuts and bolts, actionable tactics, strategy, systems, and technology, along with <clears throat> kind of deeper, more foundational work involving the heart. His commitment to building lives and businesses rooted in love is where his clients experience the real magic. He and his clients are living proof that you don't have to follow the mainstream way of doing business in order to find real success. So I think a lot of, uh, a lot of you can re resonate with this. So Steve, I'll let you take it away. Um, there's, we have more to talk about than we can fill in the time, I'm sure. So Definitely. I'll let you start with wh whatever kind of you feel is, is most important, you know, or wherever you want to start. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Yeah, I have five key points that I was thinking about in relationship to, you know, sharing this with, with you and, and your folks. And, you know, a lot of the folks that I help, the, the primary reason that they come to me is for business. And I've got a wide range of, of clients, financial advisors, and people who are brand new in business trying to become um, acupuncturists or massage therapists, so many people in the healing type professions. And in doing this work with not only my own business, but also working with so many hundreds of other clients over the past decade plus, um, it's become really clear to me that business itself isn't actually all that difficult, which it feels really hard. We struggle a lot. <laughs> I do too, right? There's a lot of challenge in business, but what I find is that the business isn't actually what's difficult. What's really difficult is our relationship with ourselves. It's our relationship with the business, with the things that the business requires us to do, like marketing or sales. And those things bring up all sorts of stuff for us, right? Oh my gosh. That's I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I love this. I love this idea so much because it's it's totally true. <laughs> I would agree with you. It's like, it's like if we could relate to ourselves, which you'll talk more about with more um, acceptance, uh, with more uh, curiosity and, and, you know, all the stuff we relate to ourselves in a healthy way, it um, naturally overflows into relating with others in a more, in a more loving way. And yeah, you know, I think business, like you said, it's about it's about relationship with yourself, and it's about relationship with others too, right? right? Like, right. like if we relate well to to our with ourselves, we tend to relate better with others. And people, you know, it's so funny. Like I found over the years, like people hire us. Those of us watching this are mostly, I guess, self employed professionals who um, are offering some kind of service, right? So I think people hire us. Um, it's, it's like. I would say even maybe more than 50% of the reason they hire us is for our presence. Yeah. You, yes. you know, like, like, yes, of course they want us to be a good acupuncturist or, sure. or a good financial advisor, mm -hmm. they want us to have the skills, but it's almost like the skills. So many people have those skills. Right. You right. know? <laughs> and so it's like people tend to tend to spread the word about Steve or about George or about Mary or about Sarah because they like Mary or Sarah or Steve, right. <laughs> you know, and, yeah. And, and, yeah, and then they happen to be a good acupuncturist or financial advisor, sure. but it's like, you, you can find so many good acupuncturists and financial advisors. You can just go on yeah. Yelp or go on Google or whatever. It's like, you could find, 
but it's, it's the presence and the relationship can't be replaced. But I'm sorry yeah. to take that away. It does start with a relationship with oneself. So please continue on because that is the foundation. Really. Yeah. Is. Yeah. And I find that it's not only the foundation, but it's like the mortar between every brick mm. that we lay. Because oh, I like just that. like in uh, our relationship with money, uh, our personal relationships with significant others or partners, um, with our family, and with, I think I might throw in there like uh, the big topics like religion and politics and stuff. All that stuff is such a garden for us to walk with all of our crap. <laughs> Those are like ripe areas for our stuff to come up. And a lot of the folks that I work with, not all of them, but many of them have some trauma in their background of varying degrees. And I think, frankly, I think all of us have trauma to varying degrees. And that needs to be held. And in the world that we live in, especially in relationship with business, there isn't really a, a format. There isn't a container for our trauma, which, is, which often comes up in relationship to our business, for that to be held and cared for. We, not to be appreciated, you know? We don't have to be guilted like we've got to get over it or you got to forgive or you got to move on or anything else, but just to be, to learn how to be present with what is, to learn how it impacts. Why, why am I so resistant to sending those emails to people? We all know how to send an email. That's one of the things that comes up often with, with clients. Uh, it might seem like a little thing, right? It's a kind of an innocuous example, which is why I like it. I feel so much anxiety. I've been struggling with sending that person that one email, right? We know how to send an email. That's not hard. It's what's going on inside that makes it hard. And so we could either push through and get it done, which, you know, I'm try not to judge. I'm super judgy, but I try not to. I'm super conscious of my judginess. We all are <laughs> judgy. And so that's one approach that could be taken. Just get it done and you'll feel better. And that often is true, but it also bypasses what's the deeper truth about our relationship with ourselves. What's going on in here that causes that to be such a thing. Because if we can address that business issue at that level, then the next time it comes up, we have actually faced and held that and it gets easier the next time it comes up because we now have that experience to rely on. And so even though a lot of my clients, we often and regularly talk about tactical business strategies and systems and implementation and actionable items, all that good stuff, right? But underlying all of it is how we feel about all that good stuff and where our roadblocks are and really giving a lot of space to just process with that. And I find that when we can work at that level, really working with the heart and the deeper self with compassion and mercy and gentleness and grace, then the other steps in business get a whole lot easier. It's I love this. Yes. It, because I, yeah, I, I do find that. <clears throat> I mean, everyone uh, who get tends to be drawn to, to uh, my, my audience of those of you watching this very, very smart people, very caring people. And it's like, you, there's nothing you can't do. Like I really believe that the person watching this right now, there is nothing you cannot do. You're like, your potential yeah. is so vast. Right. Um, especially in your business, especially in the line of work that you do is you can have so many more clients, you can create so much more impact, you can, whatever it is, you're, you're really setting your mind to. But yes, it is, it is, like you said, the, uh, the journey of bringing that out and the relationship with yourself. It's so great. It's so true. And, um, and sometimes I say that, you know, business is really work really is a stage for personal growth. <laughs> totally. It's like, yeah, it's like, but beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. So, so yeah, c continue on. Like, how do you, how do you, you know, you, you had some of the five ideas, but uh, you, how do you help your clients work with these things? Yeah. Yeah. So 
what I find to be true very often is that clients come to me and clients come to, I think, many coaches to try to help get through those obstacles and you, the email as an idea or as Yeah, an that example. was a really good example. Yeah. Yeah. And it, that's a small thing. There's obviously much bigger things like how do I do a launch or how do I create a, a product or how do I create my website or like all those other things, right? Those are all much more complex than just sending an email, but it's easy email to relate something we to. can all relate to every day. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. But you can find instructions on how to do all that stuff for free on the internet. I could like, it's all out there. None of it is really a secret. And yes, there are some tips and some tricks and some best practices or whatever, right? But there's a reason why you didn't just go do that because it's not a secret. Either there's one or two things happening. Number one is that you don't know how to do a website. So you just need education. Just like if you're a massage therapist or acupuncturist or a chiropractor, you have to learn how to do that. You didn't know how to do that before you went to school. You had to learn how. And once you learn how, now you can do it, right? So that's just a, a process of education. It's really simple. And what I find and what I've seen in my clients is that they often are educated. It's not that they don't know how to do a website. It's that they doubt that they're doing it right. Or they feel like they have to do it in a way that doesn't feel right or aligned for them. And there's, no, there's very little instruction out there that will help support that process. And that's the process that, at least in my experience, makes it feel like we're running through sludge, trying to swim in a pool full of jello, right? Like it's just a struggle. It's not because doing a website is necessarily hard. We need the technical skill, right? But we can always just hire that out if we have the financial capacity but it's our relationship with that. How do I write in a way that represents the magic that I do and feel good about it, right? There's real beauty there. And so that's where I find many folks come to me is to hold that space. And I might, I might even relate to it as to have room for the divine feminine energy of holding and caring and witnessing and supporting and also some more of the masculine, divine masculine energy of these are the tactics, these are the steps to take, this is what you've agreed to do this week type stuff to really embody and embrace all of it together. One of the things that I found that creates a lot of problems in the world and in our businesses and in our lives and a lot of struggle are power dynamics, unhealthy power dynamics. And I bring this up simply because it's, it's actually a fairly new concept for me. The original concept that I heard was that there is no good or evil, there's only power. And that stopped me in my tracks. And I don't necessarily agree with that statement fully, but I do, what I did is I, I looked at what I would consider evil in the world. And I'll wrap this back to business here in just a second, but everything relates, right? <laughs> it's all part of oneness. No, I, I, um, I love this conversation actually, <laughs> but cool. yes, yes. Yeah, I was thinking of things I consider evil and I could not think of an evil act where there was not a really unhealthy power dynamic happening. Power, as we, there's the, the phrase power corrupts or absolute power corrupts absolutely. I think that's, that's the phrase somebody said. And we can use power for good because power also can contribute to good. But so power is kind of the root of everything. It's a part of the root of everything. There's another part, which I'll get to later in the conversation, but I wanna remember that power is really significant and we have to really pay attention to it. And so the little dynamic that I wanna offer here is, and I've been practicing with this the past number of months, especially, is looking at where we are struggling, especially in relationship with someone else. And if we're struggling, power somehow is playing a role. And again, I'll touch on another part of it later on in the conversation, but this is one of the, 
kind of like a spiritual insight that I received um, that has been really revolutionary for me. Because when I can identify the, the power dynamic that's happening in relationship with someone else, whether it be a client, a prospective client, somebody I'm trying to market to, uh, you and I could be talking here and I could start to feel wonky. Maybe, you know, like you're the interviewer and I'm the interviewee and there's a power dynamic and maybe I want to have whatever, like there's probably something going on internally that that helps me to take a step back and really address. And so in my business, when I'm struggling with something, it can be really helpful for me. I often, I'm not practiced enough with this to be able to do it in the moment. I hope to get there one day, but to be able to name it at least to myself and give myself some space so I can look at it. Where, how is power playing a role here? Do I have, am I holding on to too much? Have I given it away? Am I trying to get it from someone else? All those yeah. kind of different ways it can flow, right? Really interesting. You know, I, <clears throat> I think about marketing as well and how, you know, like the mainstream marketers are trying to have power over their audience power over they use triggers they use persuasion tactics yeah. scarcity they, they want power over you right? they want to, right. they want to control your willpower to say you know you you buy when i say you buy right you know you have blah, 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 blah. and um and what i i hope i can bring more to it's like it's or, or sometimes <clears throat> especially among the, the the healing arts there's a lot of fear of the audience, the fear of the potential customer. It's like, oh, yeah. oh my God, they, they might say no, you know, right. or they might, they might ignore this offer. They might, you know. and so it's like, it's like you either you know, are like overpowering or collapsing or something, but it's like, I'm trying to bring, I saw often say like marketing can be a, like friendship, yeah. a healthy friendship yeah. where it's, it's, a, it's a give and take. It's a, it's a more of a playfulness. It's more of a collaboration. Anyway, I love I love this discussion, and I, I really uh, I'm grateful that you're doing this with your clients because that's really powerful stuff. <clears throat> I'm aware of the time, and I want to make sure we talk about um, your uh, your offers coming up too as well. But okay. um, but uh, you know, I, I when I think about your work, I think about how you just you bring love, capital L, love. Mm into in, in, into the work you do with your clients you help them love themselves more love the work um, you know and, and so kind of maybe we can end on that concept like how what does that mean for you and how how does it actually play itself out yeah yeah so because I brought up the first half of that dynamic I was talking about earlier I'll tie that in here yeah, as we go great, into the great. topic of, of love because that's the other that was the other piece of it one of the things that I learned recently is that um, Love is the heart's response to beauty and power. And obviously, we don't have time for me to go through all of it. I'm actually writing um, something to share with, with others about it, but I haven't, I don't have it done yet. But that's a, a really amazing concept for me. When I look at something, if I am not feeling love, which is what I'm, as you said, that's what I'm all about. Every email I send, my kind of service mark, if you will, is more love, not less, always. And that's A-L-L dash ways. So it's all the time and in every single way, right? More love, not less. And that's hard. That's really hard to do, especially in business, when there are so many opportunities for us to get activated or worked up or frustrated, struggling, we have those wonderful, amazing times where we're all lit up, we're doing our work and a client has good results or something, right? And much of the other time, it can be a real struggle. So if there is something that we're doing or an interaction or relationship that we're in where we are not feeling the love, I want to invite you to look at, am I, can I see the beauty here? And what is my relationship with the power dynamics here. And it's really interesting to see as the scale of, of beauty and power go up and down, we experience different qualities like respect. When there's beauty present, but power is much stronger, we feel respect. If beauty is, if we can't see the beauty and all we see is power, 
we often feel fear. And if as the beauty starts to come up, we might feel reverence or awe, or if beauty and power are both really high, like a majestic sunset, it's just, it's, that's where awe comes through and reverence comes through. And if we see all beauty and no power, like it brings out other interesting qualities. And what I've been able to do with that is really help, it helps me to understand just using those two things of power and beauty, that's my heart's response to love. So if I'm not feeling the love, what's happening with power and beauty in my business or in the email I'm trying to send or in the website I'm trying to build, right? Love that. Really, that's, really powerful. That's really good stuff. And so if we wow. can connect with love yeah. at that level, it gives us a chance to also look at our own selves and our own beauty and our own power and how, what relationship do we have with that so that we can be in a loving, healthy relationship with ourselves. And again, that's the whole foundation of moving forward in a, in a healthy, fun, pleasurable way. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Well, that's a wonderful place to uh, wrap up this conversation. Of course, much more to come. Um, I'm going to have your links in the notes below. So I do encourage Wonderful. everyone to go and take a look at Steve's website. Uh, if you'd like to sign up for his you know, email newsletter, he sends this kind of content out to you all. And uh, I'm also excited to know that you're, you're launching a group program. You know, we're, uh, we're recording this in January of 2021. And yes. though some people might be watching this years from now, so sure. <laughs> just go to go to Steve's website and see what his latest offerings are. But right now, as of now, you're you're about to launch a group program. So tell us about that. Yeah, and uh, you know, I'll be honest. I one of the things that I try to do is I don't give my clients coaching that I wouldn't be willing to receive. So this is completely not set up. I don't have it structured. I don't have it set up at all. All I have is the software that I haven't used for a year and a half that I've been paying for because I haven't been ready. And I, this is my first public announcement of this wow. um, because I want to do something. It's been part of what's in my, my heart. And I want to build a group that has a community to it where we have real connection, a lot of care, where we talk about life and business and heart and that we can connect with each other, not only for kindness-based accountability type things, but just for work groups. Um, I wanna do some like some high performance type circles, small groups that will just be, it's a, I want it to be a resource, uh, a place that people can come uh, that where they don't have to spend more time online. I actually am really wanting this to be a place that you don't have to be on all the time. And it will not be Facebook based. Uh, that's something else I'm really working on. I haven't been on Facebook in years. And it's been one of my favorite things in life <laughs> is not being on Facebook. And um, this will be completely apart from Facebook. So I don't know exactly what it's going to turn into because I don't necessarily want to build what I want. I want to build what people want and what will be valuable for them. And I want to make myself and my heart available in service to that. And so if anybody wanted to join, if you join my heart notes, uh, you'll hear about that. And I will be asking for input so that I can build what you want, what will be valuable for our our folks, our friends, yes. people that need yes. help. That is, that's where real value comes from. Yeah, it's in this partnership and in this collaboration with your, I love yeah. it, I love it. I'm looking forward to, to seeing that. Um, Steve, thank you. Thank you mm -hmm. for, for the work yeah. that you do, the presence that you bring. I think it's so special, um, especially in the business and marketing mm -hmm. space. And uh, yeah, I hope those who are watching, if you resonated uh, you know, with, with, with this conversation with Steve's presence, do look at his website, check it out. Mm. There's a link. Um, and any yeah. kind of parting words of encouragement, <laughs> Steve? Yeah. I just want to say that if you're watching this and this, if, even if you're not watching this, you are worthy. Mm. You are worthy. You are enough. You're not doing it wrong. You can do this and it's hard. It's a struggle. But don't ever believe that it's your fault. You just need either some holding, some care, some rest sometimes. 
or some education. All of that's possible. Don't treat yourself unkindly. You deserve more, more love, not less, mm -hmm. always. So there I you go. It. Thank you, George. I Beautiful. appreciate it. Thank you so much, Steve. Yeah, take care.